From HOK, uh, here at the Design Summit for the New York Design Awards, um, Caroline joins me and also uh, we also have Christina from HOK. G'day. How are you? Good, how are you? Um, so we're here to talk about um, Tavern 51 and rarities. Uh, I'll start with you, Christina. What, what is this project? It was a great opportunity to take uh, the New York Palace Hotel, find uh, extra space in the hotel itself, position uh, this additional found space, so to speak, and create a revenue generating F&B outlet uh, right down in Midtown Manhattan. It's part of a revitalization of Midtown uh, and a re-blossoming of the Palace Hotel. Okay. Uh, Caroline, what, what was the Palace Hotel like uh, prior to you coming in and putting a beautiful mark on it? The place actually was actually closed. The, they weren't using the space at all. And it was part of the original Villard Mansion built you know, in the late 1800s. And so it was completely found space, as Christina mentioned, and um, again, creating two revenue generating places was great. Okay. What does a revenue generating place actually mean? It means there's no free seat in the hotel. Uh, that's well. That's yeah. their goal: is to is you know is to have uh, some some lounge and lobby lounge spaces. But uh, j they want you to be able to buy something while you're there in a shop, mm. in a in a bar situation, any which way. Okay. And so, uh, Caroline, what do you do to create that place? It's all about making money. Right. When you walk into the the space, what do you do? What did you do? Well, the client, first of all, I have to say he was one of the best clients we've ever had. Um, he sort of gave us a, a complete free uh, range to do whatever we really wanted to do. And it's understanding what you're creating, a bar, um, and then the uh, rarities, which is the private scotch club. Uh, so you have to understand the client and you design around that. Mm, okay, and you have to understand Scotch too, I suppose. Yes. Yeah. Well, we were all willing to take part in that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a recurring theme today, I've got to say. So you have to understand the client and you have to understand the product, which is really good. So let, let's get into what that actually means. How do you get to know a client to get to understand them, to be able to, to, to exceed their expectations when it comes to design? Uh, you really have to spend a lot of time with them. Uh, brainstorming sessions, uh, going out, you know, having some dinners, actually having some drinks together, really knowing what each other, uh, how each other ticks, uh, and, and what their real, real goals for the project are. Yes, it's all about making money, but it's also putting a, a mark on, on the project, uh, and everybody wants to come away with this being very successful. And for Northwood Hospitality, this was a huge success for them, mm. uh, and they will they will say that again and again. What does it mean to be a success, Caroline? How does that how does that manifest itself? A happy client. <laughs> no, but what about from the space too? I mean, the, to be successful, sure you're selling, yes. they sell, but there's right. more, as as Christine is alluding to. What is that more? Well, you end up with a beautiful product, and that you everybody who comes and loves it. Um, I think that's the real goal. Mm. You have, end up with a beautiful space. When I walk into the space, what am I experiencing? Um, coziness, sexiness, um, intimate, um, luxury is a real big one. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, let, let's, let's go back to luxury, designing for luxury. Again, we talked about it prior, but to design in a competitive market, there are many other options. This is a city full of amazing options. So how do you create something that is desirable? in that market? Well, that's something that's pretty tricky because hotel design and interior design in general is more trendy than, uh, let's say, you know, architecture in general. Uh, it's really knowing what's, what's hot, what's, what's on, what, what's fashionable. And, uh, you know, what Caroline said that a happy client is really what you want. In hotel design, you get to experience the space yourself and you get to see other people experiencing it. So the real, the real goal and knowing that you've done your job well is seeing everybody celebrate there, mark time there, have special occasions there. Uh, it, it's really wonderful because you get to participate. Mm. But also, I mean, sorry, Caroline. No, I was just going to say, the other thing about the Villard was that it was its set character already. It wasn't something new. So we were really able to build on something, mm. you know. The other thing that's interesting to me is that, I mean, hotels are beautiful, new ones are great, but they age really quickly. So, so what, what do you do as designers to, to keep it, um, you know, alive, if that makes sense? It doesn't become stale, and that happens. It does. Um, well, you hope that your design actually goes beyond that. Um, but there's, 
I mean, I'm trying to think, it really, it's... You really need to partner with, with, uh, with the client and with the hotel to also operationally keep up. Um, create new drinks, uh, you know, create a, a, a different menu, perhaps, seasonally or over time. Um, there needs to be more than a living, I mean, it, design could take you only so far. It needs to be a living and breathing evolutionary process as mm -hmm. well. It, um, I'm just curious if the if the the, the design that, which is your doing, which is the look and the feel of the space, whether through this process of essentially creating a new hotel, as as you've been saying, how the client themselves rethink their practice. You know, I'm, I'm talking about the design of how you give a, make a hotel work through the the way that you've actually created a space itself. Have they rethought, or how do they rethink based on what we look and feel when we're inside? They rethink. Uh different access points or different ways to, it, th for the rarities, it was a Scotch bar, so yeah. membership only. Uh, that was a new way of thinking how to sort of parcel out an F&B outlet uh, by membership. You know, you used to that for a gym, but not necessarily for a rare Scotch bar. That was different. Um, making the downstairs Tavern 51, the more public uh, anybody can come in uh, side of the bar. Yeah. Uh, and then going up the traditional or um, existing staircase, which was very much part of the Landmarked. central theme, uh, keeping that intact, but connecting the spaces, but, you know. So through your design, they are also having, well, they actually had to redesign how they thought about the service delivery of what they're exactly. doing. That's what we're exactly. trying to get at. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay. Sure. Are you excited? Okay. It's members only. Can you actually go in there and have a scotch? You can. You, so you can? Yeah, we have some pool. <laughs> <laughs> you got some pool. Well, I look forward to my invitation tonight. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> I'll be staying at the Champagne Suites and I'll get a scotch later. Um, Caroline and Christina, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.